and it that no good can come out of cooperation between the Negroes and whites in the United States? Well, the cooperation that uh, existed between whites and blacks brought about the Civil War, which supposedly was fought by the white liberals to solve the problem, and the problem still exists. The cooperation, the uh, cooperation that existed between whites and blacks, white liberals and blacks, also brought about the uh, so-called Emancipation Proclamation, and the problem is still unsolved. The cooperation of whites and blacks brought about the 13th and 14th Amendment, and the problem is still unsolved. The cooperation between whites and blacks brought about the Supreme Court desegregation decision, and the problem is still unsolved. In the last presidential election, the cooperation of Kennedy and the blacks brought about the election of Kennedy, and the problem is still unsolved. So I think that you will uh, intelligently conclude that we are justified in being very cautious concerning the cooperation between whites and blacks based upon its final product or ultimate product. If cooperation between whites and blacks is going to produce some good, then good. But if this cooperation is not going to produce anything but hypocrisy and promises that are never fulfilled or promises that are never kept, then I think you will agree that we're justified in first developing some kind of cooperation among our own people. And this doesn't mean that we're anti-white or anti-anything. It only means that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches that our problem can best be solved by us. We ourselves can solve it if we'll get together among ourselves, among our own kind, and put forth intelligent efforts to do so. No white man is going to accept a black man into his society if that black man hasn't shown any ability to do anything for himself and his people in his own society. But when the black man is able to show that he can stand on his own feet and see for himself and think for himself and hear for himself, uh, and behave uh, according to how he feels, then you find white people will begin to realize that black people are human, part of the human family is the same as others. So what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is trying to do, instead of uh, getting us involved in some kind of uh, civil rights struggle or begging the white man for civil rights, which means acceptance into his society, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that we have to uh, place emphasis upon the human aspect, that the black man has to be taught how to think, how to stand up, how to do the things for himself as a human being, not as a citizen. Once he proves that he's a human being, he'll, he's acceptable as a citizen in any society. But most whites don't even think blacks yet are part of the human family. Why are you trying to make the black acceptable in white society? We're not trying to make the black acceptable in white society. This is why whites think we teach hate. We're only interested in the black man being acceptable among his own people uh, uh, and, you know, with each other. Uh, and lifting himself up. We're not even concerned with the white society. We're, we're concerned with the black society. Once the black society is standing on its own feet, the attitude of the white uh, society, if it desires to do so, will automatically change. But you will never change the attitude of white society toward black society through any kind of legislation or trying to force it. It will never be done. It will be hypocritical, and it will only make matters worse, as it has made matters worse everywhere you've tried to do this by force. 